two. I'm just coming straight to YouTube from, from here. So I just thought I would stop in because I am very upset if you guys have not noticed and I haven't gone live today, but I'm learning a lot um, about the Proudfoots and I wanted to share that with each and every one of you guys personally and the people that are gonna be coming back through the replay crew. So many of you know that um, Sebastian Rogers disappeared February 26th. Uh, the parents called it in. I can't even remember what time they called it in, but they the first interview, they basically said he had a great night before, um, you know, nothing really to see. They went to, to eat, went bowling, blah, blah, blah. Uh, nothing major. She He went to bed around nine o'clock. She woke up at 6 a.m. He was not there. She looked around the house. She called Chris on the phone. He asked her to look here, look here and they called they immediately called 911 together that's the story that we heard right that's the initial story we heard that was when he was in the green shirt and people analyzed that 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 video and we noticed that there were scratches and not just scratches major bruising i don't know if you guys noticed that around it i know when i was on there talking to or, you know watching uh, justice for all he was showing the scratches and circles and stuff like that but around them uh, there was like bruising around those scratches and that's a little more extensive than um, just getting scratches from a dog that just had nails done you know Ronnie it's nice to see you hey Allie Sandra oh Sandra it's nice to see you my love uh, Maria it's nice to see you Allie Al I already said hi to Allie Turtle Madness Gigi oh Ricky Beavers is in the house I think you texted me I just haven't had a chance to look at it I did call the Sheriff's Department in Sumner County. Um, um, oh, okay. Uh, for for what? What was going on? I didn't. I saw you texted me, but I've been so busy doing so much stuff. Um, Allie, her car isn't going to be ready until Monday. Yeah, that's the problem. I would have been out there. I wanted to be out there for Riley Strain, but everything just happened with the car. My car's been down for two weeks, guys. I mean, it's not like. Um, it's been easy. I've been here. I haven't been able to leave. I've had to order groceries to the house. Like I literally have gone nowhere. I, I The only time I left here is I went and asked my neighbor to give me a ride up to the store when I ran out of vape juice and I didn't run out. I still had one more pod left, which would have got me to Monday. Um, so I, yesterday, you know, I had him take me up there. But um, anyways, long story short, I would have been there. I would already be there searching right now. I'd be in the woods right now with everybody else searching for this boy but the car issues got me down. So I'm picking up the car, hopefully, cross our fingers, the mechanic doesn't call again. Um, but if everything goes well, I should have the car back um, Monday. But the problem is, is I have a meeting on Tuesday. So I've got, to, I've got to go to my meeting, and as soon as my meeting wraps up, I'm planning on getting on the road and making the 12 or 13 hour drive uh, to Tennessee. There's several cases there. Uh, our time will not go to waste uh, there. Um, you know, I pray to God that Sebastian's found. Uh, I'm hoping he's found safely, but I think we all know that the behavior of, of Katie and, and Chris are um, very upsetting and make us feel a little, you know, odd here. So <clears throat> they seemed like they were grieving parents and just very concerned for the whereabouts of their son, their autistic son that walked out the door. Remember, he just walked out the door. And so searchers came in, a lot of law enforcement, they had a lot of assets there and deployed almost immediately. And the searchers, the problem with the searchers are, is um, uh, people in JLRs were saying you're joining. So I asked, yeah, I, yeah, I will be um, heading up there on Wednesday. So I'll be aiding in those efforts. Um, so it'll be, but I'm not going to be where I, I'm going to be searching. I like I think I think he's just um, kind of watching. He's kind of you know he's now a news reporter, so he used to actually get out there and search. I know he was out there searching, but he really wasn't. I mean he was you know he was basically shadowing the searchers, if you will. Um, we're going to be going out and actually searching in different areas. I don't think we're going to be in the same area with the Cajun Navy. I don't see, think that's fruitful. They've got a lot of um, a lot of saturation in that area, and uh, why not just expand and, and, and do a different area? So um, we're going to be going into some other place and you know doing our search because I've already got some areas that are identified, and so far, I mean, it, maybe the Cajun Navy has identified them, but it's not the area that they're at and they're searching for. So. 
to get back here. I'm on my phone, guys, so bear with me. Hello, it's been a while. Oh, Morbid, hey, how are you? It's nice to see you, my love. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. Hi there, Semi, it's nice to see you. I feel your pain, mine's totaled, totaled in January. Oh, good Lord, Cook, that sucks. I, mine's not total. <laughs> Mine was still running. <laughs> I mean, but it, it, it was like, it was getting, it was getting bad, right? It was getting bad. I had to replace the catalytic converter. Um, that was $732 and the, um, ABS module. That's the, the whole thing that tells you your braking system. The module, um, had to be rebuilt. So yay me. Um, Oh, hey, crime stories. Okay, so now that I got through it, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss any comments. So now that we get there, we've noticed that, um, you know, all these people are out there. Um, we went over to Riley's. The Cajun Navy was there. We really did a push to bring the Cajun Navy over uh, to the Seth Rogers case. We did a huge push on TikTok. And um, so they ended up coming over uh, they are Seth met him and everything. The Proudfoots haven't met the Cajun Navy. Katie's on the internet talking about she's brought the Cajun Navy in. No, she has not. Um, then yesterday, while they were out there, Chris, from what I hear, Chris Proudfoot came up there and basically threatened Seth to take down the, the GoFundMe. This is the biological father of a missing child that's taking off work to search for his son. Um, while the mother and her, her husband do absolutely nothing. And then while while they're out there today, a few of my friends that have boots on the ground, we've got like a lot of people out there, I'll be honest with you. And uh, so even though I'm not there, there's a lot of people out there that are representing, you know? And um, one of the locals or a couple of locals were talking to the group about how they saw it. I can't remember if, if he told me that they, they um, left in the morning or I think they said early this morning but it could have been last night I can't remember and I don't want people holding my feet to the fire on it do your own research I don't know when it was apparently there's a photo floating around that shows them leaving and they left they said Chris left in the RV and Katie followed behind in the car and I'm just like that mother just left her son like literally just left her freaking son her missing autistic son behind and she wants the sympathy of the world after leaving her son not even helping she hasn't even been out to a search area like I don't know I, I don't know what to think of this woman is she a battered wife that's scared to say something you know I just I don't know what to think at this point but I it's just my blood is boiling over and I know everybody else's blood is boiling over out there too but I just don't freaking get it make it make sense to me somebody please because I'm I'm trying you know uh, you know half holy half hood and I'm telling you my holy it, it, it's it's about to go to the wayside I'm, I'm just angry when I found out that they left him behind it's like damn you know, these volunteers care more about that boy than the people that live with him. <sighs> this case has disturbed me. Yes, Elaine, I know it's really bothering me too. I've got to be honest with you. I feel he's somewhere between their house and his workplace. I was thinking that too, but listen. So the way I think about it, like I just want to spitball. Maybe, you know, maybe this will get some, uh, some creative juices flowing in all of us. Maybe we can have a roundtable discussion about locations and stuff like that but this is what i'm thinking nobody wants okay and i, I please guys forgive me and please don't you know i'm, I'm going to be speaking insensitive here and i don't mean to because we're talking about a 15 year old autistic boy but we need to be able to have an open discussion if you are family or friends of this young boy you probably really don't want to be in my chat room right now so i'm just going to say you know out of out of respect for for everything i'm about to say you know please I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want anybody in my chat to hurt your feelings, whatever the case may be, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there's the disclaimer. Um, so I'm going to speak very matter-of-factly, guys. It's not to be um, um, insensitive in any way. It's just that I don't have time for sensitivity, if that makes sense, okay? So I'm just going to speak bluntly. When I'm thinking of crimes, I'm thinking of, you know, trying to figure out how the 
the person would behaving at the time the crime is committed because most of the times it's usually anger or something that is boiled over and in, uh, I know it sounds as cliche as this is it, a lot of the times they didn't mean for this to happen okay so the oh shit factor is always in my mind you know the oh shit factor that immediate rush of energy adrenaline and everything just flooding into your brain almost like um, a, a shock if if you will in a, in a sense so I'm trying to think about that and you're you're applying that in the fact that this person's gone okay you have a deceased individual there and so you're you're putting your mind your mind's not thinking clearly because it's running and it's got all this adrenaline rushing through it at that moment because the oh shit factor and I'm thinking that nobody wants to be driving around with a dead body in their car for a significant amount of time now there are outliers that means what do i mean by an outlier that means that that there are people that are willing to do that now i'm trying to put my mind in and myself inside of you know this chris proudfoot which i know nothing about so that's a very difficult task so i, I go by the stuff that i know uh for example uh i know that he was in the navy okay and so i think of military these are some things that i have some knowledge on and so when I think of what happens overseas when somebody dies in the military, and I'm thinking, okay, they bury them, right? They take their, they take their dog tags because they can't carry them, and this is out there. So I'm thinking, but in his case, they would probably set them out to sea or put them in the freezer, depending on where they are, to a, a base or a port of entry. So I really don't know, you know, I guess I should probably call my uncle. I still haven't called my uncle because Riley Strain was found. Um, so I'm trying to think of all these things and apply them, and that's if the, the information that I have is even correct. So I'm trying to apply these things about where he would be, but I have to think that Chris Proudfoot being so concerned about his image, if he was the one to move the body, the idea of him being caught or pulled over with that body in the car would absolutely terrify him. So I have to go off that assumption and again, it's an assumption, and it's it's based upon some, an ass, assumed fact about somebody I have no clue about. So, I don't know, but I just don't think he would be that far. Would he be a distance? I think Chris would be the kind of person that would push the envelope, but knows his limits. So, I would think that it would go outside the boundaries of the radius if he did um, decide to have the guts to move him that far with him in the car um, or the RV or whatever he happened to be in. Um, but I'd have to think he wouldn't have went three and a half hours with him. That I just, ah, that's a huge risk y'all. I mean, just, just process. That's what I'm just walking you guys through the process. Cause that's how I'm kind of, you know, looking at it. Um, Let's see where I was. I think it it moved up on me, so I don't know where I was. But I do see more of it. It's nice to see you. Um, where was I? I must have been below this because there's Ricky's comment. Do you think the proud foots left because they are getting close to finding Sebastian? I think it's several different things. I think it's a guilt. Um I think it's that nobody's believing their their lies. I think it's the fact that they thought that they were going to do this perfect and they've already made some crucial mistakes. Um, I think it's the pressure because now that they see the amount of people that are involved, they know it's just a matter of time before, um, you know, the community starts having something to say. You know, they can no longer be victim in their community. So I think more, more or less it's guilt and shame that's driving them away. I think they know that people aren't buying into their bullshit. Um, do I know that for a fact? No, that's literally just my opinion. Just 100% my opinion, but it could very well be um, them getting close to finding him. Maybe they're getting close to being in key areas. Maybe they know 
maybe they were hopeful when they knew Seth was looking further away, they weren't so uncomfortable. But now that the Cajun Navy's involved and they're searching closer to their house, I think I think that's giving us a, a good a good indicator. So it could be SSD. I I, I truly don't know, uh, but definitely um, a, definitely a, a possibility and a probability. Have a search in the park called Arrowhead Park. Is there okay? So there's an Arrowhead Park nearby. Can can one of my can one of my mods clip that from Natalie and put it in the mod chat so I can check it out later and write it in my pad? If you would please, actually, do I have? I don't have my pad right here. Oh, what the heck am I doing? I'm out now because I'm. I don't, no, 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 <clears throat> no. We'll stay here. But um, uh, I'd look more by the house at Constitution site. Yeah, Pink Butterfly. I, I have a funny because I'm just you know like I said I'm spitballing. I'm just trying to think of you know we're normal people, okay? If, if we if something like this happened to us, which you know you got to have violence in order for something like this to happen, in, in 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 my opinion, or drugs or something like that. I don't think there's any substances or anything uh, of that nature, and I can't imagine this kid unaliving himself. So, you know, um, I. I, I don't know. This is sad. Cajun is there today. Yeah, they were there. And somebody said that they were out. I could have sworn I heard them, Cajun Navy, say that it, per, um, say that they were asked to stand down for five days. But you know what happened is I if they if they were because they were out there again today. So that means they must have got a special permission or approval. But to me, it sounds like maybe. Um, they didn't have the proper approval or uh, they wanted them to stop, but there was such an outcry from the community that um, it looked almost, um, you know, or maybe the Cajun Navy said, look, you know, this is the only time we can do it. We can do it now or we can go, you know, and it might have been something like that, too. I don't know. Uh, Soto parents lied saying they dropped the daughter off at school. And you got Sebastian's mom saying she drove around the school like only way mom could have uh, passed him off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Green Eyes, you know what? When, but see, the thing is, is that with um, uh, Seba or not, Se yeah, Sebastian's mom, is that wasn't in her first two stories. So they have them on camera. He's in the green shirt. She's sitting there. It's the very first, uh, I think, the very first interview they had with the parents. And then the next time, because they got a, I guess, you know, maybe some people didn't like them or something like that. And so, so they got some backlash from that. And so the next time the follow-up interview uh, was about kind of the backlash and to fill in some additional information. And so that was the one where the um, a reporter only recorded their hands. They still didn't say anything about the cousin or anything about her leaving the house to drive around the neighborhood or around the school. But when she interviewed, when they interviewed with Chronicles of Olivia, all of a sudden a cousin was introduced, a third party, and she now was driving around the neighborhood and the school before the 911 call came in. Those were key major differences in the story and in the timeline. Then you have them not going out there to help search, them threatening Seth with a lawsuit, and then them going out while everybody else is searching to have dinner when they tell everybody they can't search because law enforcement tells them to sit at home. If you, can, if you have time to go out to dinner and you're supposed to sit at home because law enforcement tells you to sit at home, but you can you can spend an hour out di out at dinner. Why couldn't you spend an hour looking for Sebastian with everybody else? That doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to anybody else. And they got a heavy backlash because of that um, photo of them at that restaurant after they said that they couldn't leave the house because law enforcement told them to stay inside. Well, if you can go out to dinner, your ass can definitely be out there in the woods looking for him. And then right after that photo posted, guess what happens?
they get their ass up, they get in their RV, they, they put their tail between their legs, and they run away like the cowards they are. Like the cowards they are. That is not honorable. That's not honorable behavior. That's not behavior of a man that served his country. He's a disgrace. He's a disgrace. Amazing. Many volunteers were out there to help find Sebastian. They sure were. A lot of loving people that were out there uh, working because of this boy. No, they didn't run. They just left. They're not, they, they, they can't be on the run. There's no active warrant. Uh, the only time a person can be on the run or not, a, 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 not able to uh, move about freely is by court order or by detainment or arrest. I would be searching night and day until I collapse. It, right. That, I'm telling you, MTB, that's my, that's my whole entire point is that we just watched Riley Strain's mother, literally her heart, we watched her, her whole, we watched her die inside, right? We all sat here and watched that woman literally break down into pieces over her son that was missing for two weeks and the unknown of her son being missing for two weeks. This child has been missing five weeks and not, and, and, and by the way, Sebastian's mom was not leaving Nashville without her boy. I can guarantee that. And here we have this woman not out searching for her boy, not out crying one tear, and sitting there running away and leaving her missing son behind. I, I don't know, you know, they're so worried about their reputation and how they look. I don't know how they think this looks to the world, but it doesn't look good for them. Where did they go? Kelly, I have no earthly idea. Why did they let them leave? They they have no they have no uh, way of keeping them there. They're not detained, they're not under arrest, they have no court order. I mean, even if they ask them to stay home, that's why I'm saying it's so funny. On yesterday, they're telling everybody they can't leave the house. They're not allowed to leave the house, right? They can't law enforcement told them to stay there, right? Ah, and you can't make this shit up. Law enforcement told them to stay there, right? Uh, hold on, live chat. There we go. Let me go back up. Oh, Justice for All is in here. Justin, it's nice to see you. Sorry, I didn't have it on all chat. I only saw a few of you guys. Wow, you guys are all in here. Wow. Oh, it's nice to see you all. Um, so it's it's nice to see you, honey. Um, Chris messaged us. He was mad about the restaurant photo. He asked me if I knew who took it, I told him no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have told him either way. LOL. I know. I. I, I don't know who took it either. All I know is is it was posted in in several different uh, Facebook groups that I'm associated with related to the Sebastian Rogers case, and so I, I'm just like I was dumbfounded because they just sat there and told the whole world the whole reason why they haven't been out there searching is because law enforcement told them to sit at home. And on the same day that they threatened Seth, they're at a restaurant eating, obviously not sitting at home like law enforcement tells, told them to. And then today, they're allowed to leave the house now, but instead of leaving the house to go search for their son, the first time that they're obviously allowed to leave the home, um, they decide to pack up in an RV and run away. You can't make this shit up. Like, I'm just, I, I'm like, like, you can't make this stuff up. How soon will your car be fixed? Oh, hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully, to it's been two weeks. Like, I, it was two weeks on Friday. So it's two weeks and three days. I can tell you, Bullhorn Buddy's climbing walls. You guys see where I'm at right now, right? I'm ready to go to sleep and wake up and my car be back. <laughs> You know, I feel like a little kid, you know, on Christmas Eve where we go to bed really early because we just want to go to sleep so early so we can get to Christmas. <laughs> That's the way I feel right now. What time was Sebastian last seen? According to his mother, again, I don't trust anything that comes out of that woman's mouth now. Uh, but according to his mother, he went to bed at 9 o'clock on Sunday, which would have been February 25th. And she said she, and according to, again, this is added information after the first two interviews on Chronicles of Olivia's interview, she says that at some point 
she uh, heard a noise, I think she said around 10, and hollered in there, you better go to sleep. But remember, on the first interview, she said she had no problem with him going to bed. He went to bed. <laughs> remember that. Princess just remembered to dress up, dress up the swear words, LOL. YouTube frowns upon them, LOL. Are you kidding me? My cuss jar should be, like, I should be the richest person on YouTube with my cuss jar. I, did you guys say, oh, you guys haven't seen my shirt. I'm wearing the shirt. It says, I love, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. I laughed at Sonia when I, when I opened it up and I said, you know, I cuss a lot more than a little, <laughs> but I love Jesus. I don't want Proudfoot contaminating the scene. I, I, I get that, Allie, but here, here's the problem, Allie, is we don't know where the Proudfoots are going. We don't know where Sebastian Rogers is. How do we not know that they're not going out to, you know, we've heard, do, do a, um, uh, a Stacy and, and, and Sarah Wandra move and move and move the, the location of, you know, evidence, meaning remains. You, that's what I'm so concerned about is is their lead how do we know they're not going somewhere where they actually put the the stuff to go remove it and move it and, and destroy it even more I mean we don't know what they're doing I don't like them moving I like them in the house I like people that are persons of interest in my mind being in one fixed location and 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 and, and we knowing where they're at and knowing that they can't be messing or monkey fucking excuse my language with evidence or obstructing justice. Excuse my language. Sorry, guys. She's only worried about defending Chris. What about exactly? It's see. I I, I have mixed feelings about this. Is she a battered wife? I mean, it doesn't give an excuse. It really doesn't give an excuse. But you know, I just I wonder. I, I'm just, you know, I just wonder. Or should we be concerned for her safety as well? You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're angry right now, but maybe, you know, I'm all about being angry, but I'm all about making sure that everybody's safe before we, we go, we get outrageous, you know, or, or be outraged. And I keep wondering, you know, if we do believe that there is abuse in the home, would it be that far of a stretch that, that she's scared of him? You know, I mean, no excuse. I, I still don't like her and she's still a liar as far as I'm concerned. But I'm still just asking the question because no matter what, I don't want her injured or her to accidentally disappear as well, you know? Even if they give a Nancy Grace interview, they would do it from Zoom. They wouldn't have to travel there. Exactly. And not only that, but if it's if Nancy Grace wanted them live, it's the Nan it's Nancy Grace. She would fly them in. When you have this is the thing people don't understand. When you go on those talk shows, it's very rare that you actually get paid uh, for you to go on there, unless it's a case and they really want to hear your story and you're just reluctant to go on there. They may throw some money and say it's for content, you know, like you show, you, they, they'll buy some private photos from you. But very rarely do they actually pay you for your interview. And, um, but when they go out there, one of the, the um, um, perks is they wine and dine you. You have a great trip. You have a great flight. You live. You 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 stay in in a five star hotel. You um, they they cater to your every whim. Um, you know that's that's one of the perks of it. So if, if they if Nancy Grace really wanted them on her show, she would fly them in. They wouldn't have to the the drive. Does Lebanon have any bodies of water? I don't know. I'll have to look. I, I've been looking at the map. Oh, shoot. I just hit something. I almost timed somebody out. If I accidentally time you out, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm working on the phone. I, I didn't time anybody out. I almost did. They are enjoying their days. They surely did not look very concerned in that photo at the restaurant. I mean, to be honest with you. They, they really just had no concern about them. I think that was the most bothersome part of all of this is the lack of concern. Uh, she gave a weird excuse for not checking, checking out the noise. Because there probably wasn't a noise. Remember, she did two interviews before that and nobody heard about, she never brought up a noise. It wasn't until like the third interview or the fourth interview, it was Olivia's interview that they start talking about this noise. 
So I don't know what, what to, to think about that. Okay, everybody, I'm going to go. All right, Ricky. God bless you. Take care. We love you. I don't know how far how far back that was because I'm just getting through the, the messages here because I'm kind of, we're not really showing anything and I don't have it set up to take phone calls. We're just doing a live directly from the app. So anyone who had a, a, a loved one missing knows nothing can keep you in your house. Exactly, Gwen. It just doesn't make any good sense, period. It, it their behavior, you know, and everybody's been screaming. You guys can tell. You guys, I'm, I'm telling you, my audience, and they can tell you here. If you're not familiar with my channel, or you're not in here, I have regulars, and they can tell you right here, right now, that I was very hesitant to. I mean, I came out the gate, and I'm like, you know, their behavior is really odd. I don't like this, this, this weird laugh when she said he went to bed without a problem. There was just something about it. Remember, you guys can go back and look and fact check every bit of this because all of these videos are still up and so I was I was concerned I'm like no I don't believe them but I wasn't I wasn't pointing fingers or doing anything you know dramatic or drastic or anything like that and then the behavior panel picked it right up and and went with that first interview in the green shirt and even seeing all those scratches and stuff on them they didn't really give us nothing they excused almost everything that I thought was a glaring um, issue that made me believe that they were guilty they're saying oh well then this and this you know you got to look at the whole thing and yeah they're passing this off and they're giving reassurance and I'm like but that's what I'm thinking is the reason why they're guilty so I second guessed myself and I kind of backed off I'm like let me just see where this plays out at the end of the day we really don't have a lot of information um, and then the video of the light sources came out with the two what people believed are flashlights. And then we still even had to look at that and say, well, if somebody didn't circle them, would we even think that there were flashlights? Would we even know what we're looking at. And the answer for me, and, I, and I'm only answering for me, was a big fat no. I don't know if I looked at that by myself, if I would derive that those were flashlights and that was sus subject one and that was subject two. I don't know if I would have picked that out of, of what I was looking at. So I have to exclude that as we really don't know. We're only using somebody's opinion of the, what they think they see when they circled that and said subject and flashlight and subject and flashlight. So that's their opinion of it, not not mine. I, if I looked at that photo, uh, that video, that stretch of the video, would I have made the same assumption? I'm not sure if I would. I'm not sure if I would, and I'll never know because it's already put in my mind to look at it. So I have to exclude that. So that really, there wasn't anything that I could hold my uh, put my teeth into, and you know, to say whether I really thought that these people were guilty or not and still with no evidence but now we have some more corroborating behavioral issues red flag behavioral issues that I'm seeing with this family that we really see only with a certain type of, of person and it's usually equated to a guilty person and so this is their behavior not coming out of their home isolating not being part of the search efforts not posting flyers not showing emotions seeming as if you already know the outcome and then when things get tough, running off with your tail between your legs like cowards. Well, for the Proudfoots, it's like check, 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 check. So I don't know. I don't know. Let me just go through here and see if there's anything else. Thank you for whoever became the, the newest member of the coffee club. I see we have some trolls in here. <laughs> Thank you. Don't forget to give our beautiful mods a hand. They have always, um, they're always such pleasant uh, mods. They always welcome everybody. They're the kindest people in the world. I think I have the best mods. And I know that every single creator out there says the same thing. They have the best mods. And while I do believe each and every one of those creators that say they have the best mods, I truly believe they have the best mods. I truly have the best mods. <laughs> Okay, I got the I got the prettiest baby. Okay, we all know that. No, I'm just joking. But I do. I have the best mods. And I just want to thank them. And I know that they work tirelessly to make sure that y'all's chatting experience is not overran with a bunch of disgusting BS from disgusting people that have nothing better to do with their life. Uh, and probably should go get their head checked. But who, who, who am I, right? Who am I? I don't like to judge. 
Betty, are you coming to Tennessee? You know damn well I'm going to be there. As soon as the car, Justin, I will call. I will literally, when I pick up my car, I will be calling you and I'll tell you exactly when I'm leaving. I'm praying to God to get my car back Monday. If I'm getting my car back Monday, then I'm literally going to be packed up and on the road Tuesday after my meeting. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to do my live. I'm going to get to my meetings. I'm going to get my meetings knocked out and I'm going to get straight on the road right from my meetings and hit it until I quit it. So I will be there. Don't know where I'm staying yet, but I'm coming. Uh, Chris got very, very defensive when asked about the flashlights. I know. They're, well, they're defensive about everything. You can't ask them boo because at, no matter what you ask them, he, for some reason he turns it around as, I mean, even the search. He's yelling at Seth because the search is too close to the home and it's making them look bad. What? Like, he disappeared from there. Where do you want them to search? Like, you know, but this is secondhand information. In all fairness, I didn't hear that come out of Chris's mouth. And I didn't hear Seth's response. I'm hearing it from, you know, a person of a person of a person that heard it. So, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, seriously, take it with a grain of salt. You know, somebody said, Grandma is a recluse and she won't join any show. Which Grandma? Are we talking about Grandma Rogers or Grandma Proudfoot? And then it comes back to um, how many people, why is nobody in the Proudfoot family helping? We know that it sounds, well, it sounds like um, Chris's mother is in the real estate business and is able to get real estate signs fairly quickly. So that tells me that she's probably well known in her community. So as a realtor, um, so what is she doing to aid in helping this? I mean, it, you know, I, I'm curious if she's got ties to this community and a realtor with a real estate agent and able to get some people, some more people involved with freaking advertisement. What in the hell is Grandma Proudfoot doing? Just asking. Just asking. What do you think about Mom's secret boyfriend? He could have gotten jealous or... I, you know, I'm hesitant on the whole boyfriends and stuff like that. There's so many rumors that just get popped up and people just run with them. I have not seen any evidence or heard any evidence of that just yet. And not only that, I keep thinking that, that Chris Proudfoot, it, he, if he's the kind of man I think he is, um, he's keeping a close eye on that house when he's away. Uh, that's probably why he he's probably abusive to his wife is because he's abu he's abusing her thinking she probably already is doing something when she probably isn't doing anything. Um, does she could she have a boyfriend if he's gone out of the house uh, enough and they're they're still in a new marriage? Um, and the reason why I say that is they haven't been married a full decade. Um, then uh, you know I guess it's possible she has a boyfriend, but I haven't seen anything and knowing. Chris, it seems like he would have cameras on at all times somewhere. I mean, it just seems like that, to, he just seems like that kind of person to me now. Annette, it's nice to see you. I live in Tennessee in Sumner County and they center, they have uh, Center Hill Lake, Cedars of Lebanon State Park, and Piercy uh, Priest Lake, Maribo Lake, like 10 lakes there. Hmm for whoever was asking. Take a snapshot of that. Okay. Sorry guys, I need to take a snapshot of that. For all the people that are just coming into the chat, I see there's been a lot of deletes and edited com or removed comments from my mods. So I just wanna remind all the new people that come here, you might be able to go into other chats and just willy nilly be nasty to people that disagree with you or say things mean. Um, to people you don't like in their chat or to me and quite frankly we don't roll that way over here because we're what are called adults and we handle our business in adult like fashion so that means we say what we mean we mean what we say and if anybody's going to say it say it meanly it's going to be me not you so um, the rules of the chat there's really one major rule and that is don't be a dick okay 
I don't care your, your position. I don't care your, your sex, your creed, your nationality. I don't care whether you like me, hate me. Um, you're for or against the people we're for or against. It doesn't really matter. All, all that matters is you have a place for your opinions. If you say them respectfully, nobody will attack you. Every now and again, people's emotions get heated when discussing these cases, and we all try to understand. And we try not to be too trigger happy with our uh, removal and stuff like that. But if you're out of line, you're out of line, and you just need to own your role and just not be a dick. Okay? Now that all the rules are out of the way, I listened to her details of the full day Sunday, and it sounded like what someone does for their victim when they're, they know it's going to be their last, ooh. You know what, Frankie, I just keep wondering because you know, there were some things going on and we have to think why all of a sudden would this happen? And that's one of the reasons why I asked Smiley uh, and when, when they were live doing an interview with Smiley, I may not have been the only one that asked it, but she asked the question. I remember earlier in that live, I did ask it. And, and the question basically was, um, you know, because he's autistic, his outbursts, you know, uh, what were his outbursts like and were they, you know, basically violent and what would trigger those outbursts? And the way that she asked the question was almost verbatim the way I wrote it. So that's why I thought it was my question that she asked. But again, uh, I don't want to assume that, but it might have been somebody else's, but that's the question I asked. And she said that, uh, and Chris responded that he just basically, you know, stomps his foot and puts his fist down by his side, and that's about as crazy as it gets uh, for him. So I keep wondering, well, if there's not a lot of violence in the house, you know, what would make this child disappear? And the only real thing that I can see that was changing in this child's life was he was getting ready to go to his father's house, and his father was going to have full custody of him for, for, for the first time. And so I'm thinking, you know, what would make this major change in their custody arrangement? And so if it was an agreed upon custody arrangement where Seth didn't have to go into the courts and fight them on it, the question would be why? Was Sebastian getting too much for them to handle? Was there too much, um, too much drama in the household that Chris could no longer handle it. He didn't want to be there. That's why he got jobs where he was gone for weeks on end is because he just couldn't handle being at home with his wife and his stepson that wasn't his that was causing him all these problems. I mean, you, you, you know, I'm not saying that that's what happened, but, uh, you know, just we're theorizing here. So what was the major thing? And then I started thinking, well, you know, if, if there was some internal trauma, to inter not trauma, but internal turmoil going on inside that house and they wanted to, you know, let Sebastian go live with his father, then no problem. But, you know, how would that affect Chris and Katie's lifestyle? Because he is disabled, so they got to be getting some funds for the disability. Seth is a, a proud father and, and loves his son and very much involved in his son's life. So I have to assume that there are some types of um, child support related uh, expenses he has for this for his son. So they're going to be losing all of that income, plus they're most likely going to have to start paying child support on Sebastian themselves. And with Chris's elevated income, you know, it is based on the household income. Would they have had to pay Seth more money than Seth had to pay them? You know, and, and how much of this would have rocked their personal finances. So, Frankie, when you ask me to, you know, that it, it's like they're the last day, you know, it, it sometimes I feel that it could have been because it was, uh, you know, but then you got to ask yourself, was this something they regularly did on Sunday? If it was something they regularly did on Sunday, then no, it wouldn't have been, you know. But I, I you, to be honest with you, me, me, me and you, Frankie, we kind I, I get you because I have those feelings too because of the, the whole long ass story I just told you or, you know, bringing you up to that point. The truth always comes out. It does. It's just sad that this boy, you know, it seemed like he was just about to be able to be happy you know what I'm saying like he was it seemed to me like he was just about it seems like there must have been something going on inside that home that was very uncomfortable for everybody um, no matter how you look at it even if Sebastian ran away which I really don't 
think he did. I think something happened to him inside the home. But even if he did run away, why would he be running away? Especially when he's never ran away before. If that was the case, then there's something triggering him inside the home. If he's having behavior issues, there's something triggering him inside the home. So um, we know that he's he felt like Chris was rough with him before because he went and told his teacher which he was supposed to do, and the teacher did what they were supposed to do by notifying the authorities to investigate the situation. So there is that too. So now we know that he has physically touched um, Sebastian to discipline him. You know, I don't know how I feel about that with Sebastian being at the age that he is. You know, um, I don't know. I just feel bad because I feel like the law, and I, I, I'm angry because we, we, we're out here, okay? If they can't find a body, they ain't doing shit in Tennessee. Let's, let's face it, okay? We got, we got plenty of, of evidence of that. We got Summer Wells case, shit ain't, got, nothing's happened on that case. We got Layla Santanello. Nothing's happened in that freaking case. We got Holland Snap. Nothing has happened in that case. It took an act of freaking God for the Riley Strain case to bring that boy home. And then now we're out here uh, working our ass off uh, yet again in Tennessee for victim number five that we made go national. And it's still all alone. And you know damn well this case is going to go freaking cold if we can't find Sebastian, because this is the state of Tennessee and good heavens to get the state of freaking Tennessee to do a damn thing, a damn thing would be amazing. Y'all need to vote better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys, are Tennesseans, you get, you, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know what to tell you, but all these, all these kids, nothing's getting solved there. You guys need to be funding your freaking police. You need to be funding every, you need to be funding the shit out of some law enforcement in Tennessee right now, now y'all. If, if a politician ain't telling you, talking to you about how to fund your law enforcement anywhere in Tennessee, you need to be looking past them and finding out what politician is talking about funding law enforcement in Tennessee because this is getting freaking ridiculous and they're all sitting in Tennessee unsolved sorry losing my cool over here take it back right you can take a breather take it back take it back but it's time to fight it's time to start uh, putting a, a microscope on the situation going on in tennessee why aren't these cases being solved why is nobody going to jail why are these cases consistently and constantly going cold in the state of Tennessee? Sepsis in the house? Our beautiful sepsis? She here? Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, sepsis, it's nice to see you. I can't find your your chat, but if you're in the if you're in the chat, I, I love you. I miss you. I hope you're feeling better. You look beautiful. You've been looking great. I gotta say, you've been looking great, unicorn. It's nice to see you. So there you guys have it, folks. I I don't believe the proud foots, and you know what? It's gonna piss everybody off, and I really don't give a shit. Talk about me. Talk about Bullhorn Betty all day long about how how awful I am and how I'm going in there to stir up shit. I don't really care, but we're putting eyes on this boy some way somehow, and we're putting eyes on the proud foot some way somehow. And you know what? If any of the proud foot family is out there, you know, this is a 15 year old boy, and whether or not he was your kin or not. That man is your kin, and if you have any doubt in your mind that that man is capable of this, come forward. I am dead ass serious. Freaking come forward. We need to find Sebastian. Sebastian didn't deserve any of this. He deserved none of it. And you know, you, I don't want to hear nothing from the proud, but you know how your family, you know how Chris is. You know Chris better than any of us. You know that man. You know he can't keep a relationship. You know he's been violent in the past. 
You've watched him while he's been drunk. You know his behaviors. You know, you know, you know, you know, and you're sitting silently by and doing jack shit while this boy is out there somewhere and needs to come home. I don't have the patience for any of you. Do the right thing. Not because it's the easy thing, but because it's the right thing to do. I'm just, I can't, I can't. And, and the, the idea, you know, this boy, and I keep thinking, if this is his ending, what do we not know about? What do we not know about? You know, are we gonna have like Madeline Soto 2.0, not to that extent, but just the abuse aspect. Like 2.0, where we find out that, that Chris has been abusing him for, for a really long time and mom just willingly sat by and, and turned a blind cheek to it. I mean, is that what we're gonna be dealing with in this situation? I don't think SA. I'm just talking about just the physical, you know, type that leads to um, premature deaths of, of teenagers. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know. But I'd like to get some people out there. I think we need to coordinate. We need to get our, our, our resources together. We need to look at the map. We need to go out there and search. And you know what? It, it, and we need to be looking for the Proudfoots. The Proudfoots are somewhere, okay? They haven't gotten too far. Um, there's a, a gajillion people out here on the streets of YouTube and TikTok. You guys can be sending your leads to, but we cannot let these Proudfoots out of our sight. We don't know what they're up to. We don't know what they're going to go and muddy with. We don't know if they're going to be messing with evidence. We don't know if they're going to be moving Sebastian. We don't know what they are, but we know they're capable of just about anything at this point. And at this point, I'm going to say they need to be monitored. You know, call me crazy, but I just don't think they should be willy nilly out here in the world. I hope they're not going to be like, you know, Ed McMahon knocking, knocking on Bullhorn Betty's door. <laughs> those, those people scare me, okay? Uh, when you can do that to your own son and just not even help and just a mother freaking ran away from her son, her missing son. She got up and left her freaking missing son. You got Riley Strain's mother just begging for one more day with her freaking boy. And you got Sebastian's mom running away. I'm just, I can't, I can't. You guys take this, do whatever the hell you guys want to do with it. I don't know. I, I got, I, I'm going to be there when I can get there. I'll let everybody know tomorrow. We'll have a better idea of where my car is. My mechanic hopefully calls me first thing in the morning. I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. If anybody wants to buy me coffee, you know, I'm always, I'm always welcome for coffee first thing in the morning. I can tell you that. I got coffee here, but you know what? Nothing beats, beats a coffee. And I have been here for literally two weeks and three days come tomorrow morning. Yay me. God bless. Take care. We'll see you soon. Rise and shine bright and early for Manic Monday as we drive ourselves into the cement wall of the week. Take care.